Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Hurricane Elsa once more. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this one will strike mainland here in the United States as a hurricane or as a tropical storm? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we are taking a look here at the satellite imagery here for Hurricane Elsa, and as you can see, there are some very tall clouds in there with this system, and right now, the interesting thing here is that the organization seems to be a little off. It looked a lot better yesterday, and what's going on, I think, is this storm is moving so fast that it's actually breaking itself up. There isn't a lot of shear, and there's not a lot of dry air, but it is moving at 31 miles per hour, which is obviously a significant speed for a tropical system that is, you know, as fast as a lot of speed limits in cities, so that is moving as fast as a lot of cars do. Very, very quick moving system at this point. Those whites and blacks are indicating very tall clouds, though, so there is some taller cells with this one, some of which are reaching Puerto Rico, and they will be reaching Dominican Republic and eventually Haiti as well as we move through with this system. Now, let's take a look at the low-pressure location. As you can see, it's located in between Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and then pretty far south from those regions, but it is right in between those. Uh, and at this point, it's moving mostly northwesterly, and it's going to skirt along the Dominican Republic and Haiti coast and then eventually hit Cuba. That seems to be a sure thing almost. Now, here is NOAA's cone forecast here for Hurricane Elsa. And as you can see, we have hurricane warnings up for Jamaica, Haiti, and Dominican Republic at this point. Also, hurricane watches are up for the very eastern regions there of Cuba. So we're going to be watching for that. This storm has a decent chance to hit both Haiti directly and Cuba directly. And then it's going to kind of stay over Cuba. And I think this is going to really weaken this storm. I think that's the main reason why we're downgrading from a hurricane to a tropical storm, according to this, is because of how much land interaction there's going to be throughout the track. Now, it does seem evident that this one will re-enter the Atlantic and likely re-hit Florida. It seems like there's a really good chance of that, especially in the Panhandle or maybe a little bit further south than the Panhandle. There's also a decent chance that after it hits Florida like this, that it re-enters offshore of the southeast coast, impacting states like Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. I'll talk more about that later on within this video. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the probability of tropical depression later on in this storm, the probability of tropical storm, and the probability of hurricane. And then we're going to get right into spaghetti model and intensity guidance. All right, now here is the probability of tropical depression through day zero through three, which is going to be today through the sixth. Obviously, we're taking a look at about 100% chance of tropical depression status, at least, because we currently have a hurricane, so that's obvious. Now here is days three through six, so this is a little bit later on. This is going to be the 6th of July through the 9th of July, and as you can see, this one is expected to be likely a tropical depression around South Carolina or North Carolina or Virginia, and even possibly offshore of the northeastern states where it could intensify further. We're going to be watching for that possibility later on. There's an 80 to 90 percent chance, according to this model, of tropical depression status within those dark orange regions. Now here is our probability of tropical storm, and we're only at a 60 to 70 percent chance there, according to this model. I think it's a little bit higher than that. They do have a 50 to 60 percent chance approaching Florida, but once it moves offshore of the northeast, we do have a 70 to 80 percent chance here offshore of the northeast, according to this European model. But the interesting thing here, just to prove it's a little bit wacky, uh, this is the probability of hurricane status, and as you can see, it has a 0 to 10 percent chance, even though we're taking a look currently at a hurricane active. So this makes no sense, obviously, a little bit. Uh, we're taking a look at some odd things going on with this model. Now, for the hurricane spaghetti model guidance, here is our GEFS model, or our GFS ensemble model. And as you can see, a vast majority of these members, and almost all of these members, actually, have this one skirting along Haiti and then briefly hitting Cuba, according to this model, and then reaching the Florida panhandle, eventually re-entering offshore of the Delmarva, basically, offshore of the Northeast, and then possibly impacting Atlantic Canada. We will watch for that possibility. Here's the European Ensemble Models Spaghetti Model Guidance, and as you can see, there is quite a few that take this into the Florida Panhandle as well, but we also see a majority taking it to the Florida mainland, basically hitting a long, I guess around the Florida Keys, and then just hitting the entire state, possibly moving offshore of Florida in the southeast there along the coast, 
we'll take a look at that possibility as well. The Canadian model here is the furthest east. As you can see, it keeps things offshore of the east coast the entire time of this storm. Pretty interesting to see that solution being suggested. Now here is all of the individual spaghetti models. And as you can see, a lot of these have this hitting a lot, pretty much similar to what the European model was showing, the Florida Keys, and then kind of heading offshore of the southeast coast. But regardless, impacting states like Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia the most here, according to this individual models. Now here is our intensity guidance, and as you can see, we are right on the fringe of being below hurricane status. That is because of how fast it's moving. Obviously, it's breaking itself up, and that is why it is weakening at this point. I expect within the next update, it could possibly be a tropical storm, which would be like 15 minutes after this video is uploaded. So it could get downgraded to a tropical storm pretty quickly after this video. Wouldn't it be just hilarious? Yesterday, I uploaded it, and in the video, I was talking about it being a tropical storm because 15 minutes... Well, actually, I uploaded a little late yesterday, so basically, I uploaded it, and then like... Five minutes after I uploaded it, it was announced that it was a hurricane. And then watch when I upload this one, uh, I'm talking about it being a hurricane, but it's going to be announced that it's a tropical storm before I even get this video out. That would just be obviously uh, really unfortunate for me, but that is the way so sometimes things go. It's expected to weaken quite a bit, but stay a tropical storm for at least the next five days, which is basically the entire time it encompasses hitting Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and even Florida. So we will watch this, obviously, over the coming days as it's going to impact many United States. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and start talking about impacts. Most likely arrival time of winds, total rainfall, total winds, uh, and then even where both the European model and the GFS model take this one. Now you can go ahead and find your location on this, but basically it's expected to hit Florida, uh, the very, very southern regions of Florida. It should be impacting you guys by about Monday at about 8 a.m. And then by about Tuesday, 8 a.m., we see it's re reaching the middle portions of Florida. And then that night it'll, it would be hitting the Florida panhandle if that's what it's you know on the trajectory to do. It's crazy how it's going to go so fast, but it's actually going to slow down so much as it reaches Florida. It's moving really fast right now, but it is expected to really, really slow down. Uh, to where it's going to be impacting Florida possibly for over 24 hours. Super interesting, obviously. Here's the total rainfall with this one. And as you can see, if you're anywhere in the yellows, that's where we're one inches plus. So if you're anywhere in the blues, greens, or grays, that is below one inch of rainfall. But yellows and above are one inch and above. The reds is two inches to five inches of rainfall. And then those browns there, where we see a lot of that for Florida, is where we're taking a look at about five to ten inches of rainfall. So obviously a very significant amount of rain expected there. That is the European model, by the way. Now here is the accumulated maximum wind gusts. So this is over the course of the next 168 hours. This is the maximum wind gusts we expect for any given location. And as you can see, not only Florida, Florida is getting pretty much 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts, but this model has 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts for the Georgia coast, the, Flo the South Carolina coast, and then areas in North Carolina and Southeastern Virginia. Obviously, we're going to need to really watch this closely. I'll show you guys in a minute what this is because of. And here we go. We're taking a look at the 10 meter wind gusts here. Not accumulated this time. This is for individual frames. So by the time we're taking a look at about 2 a.m. on Wednesday, it has it offshore of basically Tampa Bay. By the time we're reaching Thursday morning, it'll be offshore of Georgia. But it's just close enough to the water where it actually intensifies. And then as you can see, as it's offshore of areas like Virginia Beach in northeastern North Carolina... It is at its most intense there, where it has 70 mile per hour plus wind gusts expected here according to our European model. So this storm continues to strengthen because it's close enough to the coast to where it's getting that moisture and warm water to really uh, increase its intensity. Super interesting, obviously. The GFS has a bit of a different solution. It does have it hitting the same place in Florida, but it actually has it a lot further inland. Still 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts along the east coast, though. Now here's my official cone forecast, and I'm just going to go over the stats here. You can tell where I think it could possibly hit based on the cone. But basically, we have 75 mile per hour winds, 998 millibar low pressure center, and it's moving to the northwest at 31 miles per hour. Again, that is why it is breaking up. And I can see now that I have it still listed as a tropical storm Elsa. Maybe that'll be right. Maybe it'll get downgraded, uh, but I meant to put Hurricane Elsa. But whatever. You guys get the point. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a 5 out of 6. Yesterday, we were at a 4 out of 6, so we have upgraded one point. Obviously, we're getting a lot closer with this storm, and the forecast is narrowing quite a bit. 
For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think the United States will be impacted by ELSA? And if so, which state do you think will be the most impacted? And James Marr said, I believe it will impact the United States and Florida will be most impacted by ELSA. And obviously that is pretty clear by this point. So good comment of the day there. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Bennett, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you would like to be part of this patron entry today, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well. You can join this by clicking that button next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below because that helps out the algorithm so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.